Welcome to Dodgers Dogs. Casey Porter here, and we are as part of the Dodgers Daily Network, joined as I am each and every Wednesday by Austin Brubaker. Austin, we have explosive news. Yes, we do. Yeah, obviously today was an exciting day of Dodgers baseball. We got to watch opening day. The Dodgers ended up winning a comeback win from the Padres, went through the glove of the Padres towards the end and gave the Dodgers the win. Literally. Uh, That was really exciting. Literally, actually, (laughs) yeah. Uh, Dodgers started their season off on top with a win, yet that isn't the biggest takeaway right now. So if you aren't aware, within the past two hours or so, uh, there has been some breaking news that has dropped. And I think this is something that, even Casey doesn't really know a full grasp of. Yeah, I was watching uh, movies with my wife. I'm on spring break, and I, I we come off this movie, and I, I get this bombshell. It's like, wow. Yes. Uh, so Shohei Otani's interpreter, Ipe, uh, who we've seen with him, he's been kind of the guy that's been with Shohei Otani for the longest time, been one of the closest people to Shohei Otani, has been fired by the Los Angeles Dodgers because of some allegations by – Otani and some of his uh, lawyers that uh, Ipe has been accused of stealing $4.5 million from Shohei Otani in some sort of gambling investigation. There was some investigation that was going on into some other cases. Then this kind of got brought to light. There's a little bit of back and forth what's going on. What is certain right now, though, is Ipe is no longer part of the Dodgers. And he's not going to be with Shoei Otani. He was part of the game today. You saw him, different scenes with him in the dugout. That won't be the case going forward. And this this is just potentially the beginning of what's going on. So right now, just want to bring a couple of things that are broken down because we don't have all the information. I have read through the article that ESPN posted. I know the LA Times, I believe, posted some other article as well. Uh, there doesn't seem to, at least right now, be any sort of connection to Shohei Otani, at least with him and the gambling problem that it seemed Epe was dealing with. Um, and there was also some rumors going around that Shohei Otani has a option in his contract to where he could opt out if certain individuals were fired or removed. That does not include Ipe, so he that won't be an option for Shohei Otani as much as Repeat we know. that. The Do- That's important for people to know. Repeat that one more time. Yes, absolutely. Shohei Otani has a clause in his contract where he could opt out of his deal if certain individuals within the Dodgers organization got fired. That does not include Ipe for as, as much as we know. Uh, that does include guys like Andrew Fre- Friedman or Mark Walters but that does not include Ipe. So that does not affect Shohei Otani. But we are just into the beginning stages of this investigation. What is going down? The team is currently investigating. They have announced that Ipe is no longer part of the Dodgers organization. And as far as we know, it doesn't have to do anything to do with Shohei Otani. Yet this was the guy that was closest to Shohei. So a lot to digest. A couple of thoughts that I have just on the first set first thing first things first um i know there's been a lot a revolution over the past couple of years especially if states have started to legalize sports gambling and to a certain extent you can see why they've started to legalize sports gambling uh if you have a gambling problem one seek out help immediately because that is very serious and that seems to be one of the things that ipe has gone on to which is kind of funny because uh i got asked a question on monday's show do you gamble and i I, the only time that i've ever done anything like that is when i was 10 years old and i bet over a lion patriots game and i bet on the lions which is a horrible bet for me um if you have a gambling problem seek out help immediately and i know that's something that it gets addressed something that is often overlooked um this can be something that can be very serious for the Dodgers. This is something very serious for the game of baseball. I I hope that it just implicates Ipe um, because this can't implicate Shohei Otani as we go forward. Obviously, there's nothing that indicates that whatsoever. Um, so there's 
we're going to just have to wait to see as the investigation moves forward. The Dodgers will cooperate with whatever goes on in this investigation. This is a huge story, though, for the Dodgers. That is disappointing because it's overshadowing what amazing things took place today. The game of baseball starting opening day in 2024. The era of Shohei Otani started off with a win in South Korea. Uh, you got to see the game of baseball expand, grow into different continents. Yet that story gets a little gets overshadowed by this bombshell that took place uh, just a couple of hours ago. So still di digesting everything. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of commentary, just like we're talking about right now. A lot of information, news that is spread out. One, this doesn't implicate Shohei Otani. It implicates his interpreter. He was somebody that was super close to Shohei Otani, so that shouldn't affect him. But you got to wonder how this is going to affect him going forward as he continues to play because he's always been there by his side. Now what happens as he moves forward without him? The thing is, though, it is negligence and offense. I mean, if you're, if you're negligent to somebody using your funds – to pay off an illegal bookie, something like that. That that mm -hmm. implicates you. Even if you had no earthly idea, even if they're your best friends, even if it's your dad or your mom and it's the people you trust the most, if they are using your funds, that's negligence, right? So that's the only thing I think I could worry in this situation. I don't think Shoei Otani knew anything about it. I don't think it's going to be implicated that, that he did anything knowingly wrong. The only thing I'm worried about is that part of it, the negligence part of it not being a defense. Is it, am I off yeah. there? Yeah, I, and there's, especially because yesterday, I believe, uh, Epe had some sort, uh, in anticipation of this article coming out, he was interviewed and he had a long conversation, took some of the things back in the connection with show, talking about Shohei Otani uh, from Tuesday to the next day. So, um, there is a lot more to the story. There's going to be a very serious investigation that takes place as a result of this. Um, I don't believe that this is going to do anything to Shohei Otani and his future for the Dodgers. I still believe that he is the best player in the game of baseball. And I don't believe that he did anything wrong based on the information that we have right now. However, this is a story that is absolutely worth monitoring going forward as we continue on in just the beginning stages, hopefully of the Shohei Otani era of Dodgers baseball. I'll say this about the gambling thing and well put Austin. That was very, very, very well done. We're going to give the cliff notes of what you just said here in a second. In Oklahoma, we have a lot of native American land here and the native Americans. I won't give you an Oklahoma history lesson here. I could, I could go on for hours. I love Oklahoma history, but basically if you if a if a tribe in Oklahoma buys land, then they can set their own state. See, like like gambling is not a federal law; it's it's state by state, so it's a state law. So the those tribes don't have to follow the state law. Does that make they have to follow the federal mm -hmm. law, but not necessarily the state law? So if they buy land, they can make gambling legal on that land that they have in Oklahoma. So we've seen just one casino after the other, gigantic casinos with hotels attached to them. I mean, it looks like Las Vegas in some areas. And some of these, you go down to southern Oklahoma, down around Tishomingo, and that one down there, that's that's right there about halfway between Ardmore and Dallas. I mean, it's it's probably, oh, I think, 160 acres. I mean, it's like you get lost. You don't know what direction you're going when you're in this thing. I say all that to say we see gambling in Oklahoma – up close and personal there is a casino at almost every corner in the state of oklahoma believe that or not because because like i said a, 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 a tribe will buy some land they'll put a casino on it and then people will go i have seen the effects of what this gambling stuff does close up it has effects on attendance of high school sports it has effect on attendance of college sports it has an effect on everything it is absolutely terrible so austin before we move on this is a very downer type of conversation to have. You got to cover it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Give us the cliff notes again. What we know is 100% fact. What is still speculation at this point? And just sum all that up, what you just said. 
Yeah, so just going over a little bit of a recap of what we talked about initially. A couple of hours ago, it broke that uh, Ipe, who is Shohei Otani's interpreter, the person that was closest to Shohei Otani, has been fired from the Dodgers, and that has been announced by the team. They didn't really give a whole lot of additional comments. There's a report, uh, article on ESPN, I believe also in the LA Times. Essentially, the allegation going around right now is that Ipe, Shohei Otani's interpreter, stole money from Shohei Otani to pay back some of the gambling fees that he had, the gambling losses that he had occurred to the value of $4.5 million, which is a huge loss and a huge gambling. Right now, there hasn't been any statement as far as where those are. I believe Epe has stated that that was based off of other sports like overseas soccer or in the article of ESPN, he has stated that he emphasized that it didn't have anything to do with baseball, which you better hope it doesn't have anything to do with baseball. Otherwise, that opens things up even more. Uh, so right now, Ipe Shohei Otani's interpreter has been fired. That is something that we do know. And we do know that there's allegations that he stole money from Shohei Otani. There is an active investigation right now that the Dodgers, and I'm sure Major League Baseball law enforcement is going through to try to sort everything out. So I think this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we are going to know. Also important to know that Shohei Otani can't opt out of his deal as a result of Epe firing. He, I believe that is for Andrew Friedman and Mark, Mark Walters, some of the more higher ups. Uh, I don't believe that implicates Ipe and his firing because there is a clause in Shohei Otani's contract to where he could opt out of his contract if certain individuals are fired. This Firing does not affect that for Shohei Otani. So he is still under the deal, under the contract for the Dodgers for the next 10 seasons. Um, A lot to digest right now. This also doesn't implicate Shohei Otani in any sort of gambling thing, at least from what we know right now. And there is no expectation that it will, although this is an ongoing investigation. So the Dodgers are going to have to, comply with law enforcement same with Shohei Otani Ipe and we'll have to wait and see where this investigation goes certainly not the start to your season that you were anticipating or wanting in the start of the era of Shohei Otani baseball in Los Angeles man tough news to get the night started especially after the, all the excitement and Otani going over or two getting two hits last night and the Dodgers coming back and winning a great game So that's our conversation on that. We're going to move on after I say this. We are not necessarily a news reporting agency here. We consider ourselves to be more analysts. So let me say this, and and I'm I'm pretty close with most of the reporters, not some of them, I should say, that are probably going to do work on this. I'm not going to steer you which way to go. You choose the reporter you want. But I would say this for the reporters out there. Don't try to be first because you're dealing with people's lives, man get this thing right unless you know what you're putting on paper is a hundred percent correct don't do it just for clicks and likes and views and that kind of thing don't do that you're playing with people's lives here and as a viewer and as a fan know the people that operate that way know the people that will not put something on pen and paper or digitally unless they know for a hundred percent fact it is 100 percent correct go to those go-to guys or go to girls or go to you know uh, uh, reporters i should say and yeah. follow them and do not take anything else from anybody else that has been known to try to be first and try to be a, a try to get that shock view if you will that that clickbait do not follow those people you can if yeah. you want i mean i can't tell you but, but i'm just saying know the people that you can go to know the people that try to be accurate instead of first and follow them on something like this because it is so 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 important to get accurate news when it comes to something this explosive yeah no that's absolutely right one we are not going to break any sort of news on this we're just going to be reacting to what is out there and we hope to do this in the most accurate way possible just based on what we're going to see so do the investigation yourself don't just believe what i say don't just believe what casey says go actually read the article that is out there on espn 
from the LA Times. Make your own determination for yourself. Second, also, I want to re-emphasize that if you have a gambling problem or something like that, uh, go seek help. Like I stated earlier in the show, that can be something that can deteriorate your life and deteriorate your savings, just lead you down a spiral. Be incredibly careful of that, especially as we're into sports. And I know some people are into the gambling sphere. Just be careful with that. Uh, So that I want to emphasize that I want to emphasize that we're not trying to break any sort of news at all. We do have to react to this. We're We're trying to do this. Yes, we're covering it as best as we possibly can based on the information and letting you guys decide what to think of this from here. So there will be no speculation. Austin and I have no inside information. We have no more information than than any of you guys out there in the chat. So from that perspective, there will be zero speculation as far as how this is going to go forward with this show, right? (laughs) Yeah, that is absolutely correct. Okay, so we have a great chat going. Hey, what do I always say about our crowd, Austin? Oh, it's not the biggest, but it is the best crowd out there. We have an elite crowd going on already tonight. Chris Faborg, thank you so much for joining. Good evening to you. Showtime. Otani might have committed federal crimes. We covered that. Yes, that could be a federal crime. It, it might not be. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll go on down the road and we'll get our next sort of information. But Austin kind of covered that in the sense that he hasn't necessarily been implicated as far as having any knowledge of this but we'll have to see how that yeah and i'm not going to make any sort of speculation on that i'm only going to state what is out there what has been reported i'm going to say that this is just the beginning of investigation but where this investigation goes down that can lead you down a really tricky path especially with us commentating about that so i want to be incredibly careful with that bc otani's being slandered we will not do that again We, we will not at all we will not uh, speculate on any of it. So there will be no slandering of Otani mm-hmm. by us or anybody on this chat tonight. I promise you that. We will only deal with the facts, and we will not speculate any further than that. And like I said, we will not pretend to know anything that we don't, right? Yeah. That's the most important part of this. Nando, Ipe Masahara also took, yeah, also took $4 million for my bank account. Uh, Johnny Owen, could Otani be held responsible for the interpreter's crime by paying his debts? Like I said, negligence is not necessarily a defense. And the thing about that is usually when it's a federal crime, if it's a federal crime, even if the person, like the middle person that that probably did it, if they said, hey, I don't want it, it's not up to them whether they press charges or not, right? So we'll have to just wait and see and, and, and how all that goes. It is way too early to even be starting to answer questions like that we're, we're just covering it at this point and really not even developing any types of opinions at no, all not, but, no yeah. not at all and right now shohei otani is innocent until proven guilty uh, law enforcement will work this stuff out and we'll comply with there yeah michael Creo says it is possible for otani to be suspended for unknowingly paying debts that that goes back to the negligence not being a defense that i'm talking about and then hep c good evening hep c good evening showtime good evening bc good evening daniel berry sports highlights thank you so much for joining this is going to be such a wonderful show once we get past this explosive news and mark says he's reading conflicting reports again these initial reports you got to know who to trust the most important thing period when it comes to something like this is know who to trust know who won't put something out unless it is true and don't even read anything else from anybody else i mean unless you just take it as entertainment fine but but know who know who knows how to nail these things and who doesn't hey michael craywick thank you so much for joining this evening michael in thailand this gambling thing is awful i hate gambling it's ruined millions of folks who can't stop and how on earth did Shoei not know he even might have covered his gambling debt yeah we're not uh, michael's a wonderful poster but we are not going to speculate or, or give opinions on what we think Shoei otani did or did not do so we're just not going to go down that that slippery slope on on Dodgers dogs tonight. There are probably other shows that will and, and sit around and for for click sake and clickbait sake try to come up with different scenarios about this and that and some some deals that that are pretty explosive. But we absolutely will not speculate on what we think Otani might have been involved with and what he might have not been involved with. Was I too negative there, Austin? 
No, 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 no. We're, that's just something that we, at this point, don't have any information, and there's really no point in talking about it as far as speculation of what could be. I don't think that's smart for us. I don't think that um, is fair to Otani right now, too. We're just going to have to wait for law enforcement to try to figure things out. Yeah, so in Cali, gambling is illegal, but all this other crap like DraftKings is legal here. Yeah, and so the problem with those deals are like online deals. Those transactions are av- actually being made physically transacted in a state where it is legal although you are a person that's living in california you're making a transaction that is sitting in a state that that gambling is legal and that transaction happens in that state so that's how they get around that i beyond that i don't know a whole lot about all of that but yeah this is a pretty explosive topic hepatitis c later poor yamamoto about to make his debut in a gambling Attic took his shine. Yeah, that is. It's, anytime you have a story like this, man, it detracts from everything, doesn't it? Oh, it detracts, especially from what happened. To, today was opening day. We yeah. uh, A lot of people woke up at 3 a.m. to watch their Dodgers start the 2024 season, and they were excited. The Dodgers came out with a win, as I stated at the beginning of the show, went right through the glove of the Padres, literally. And the Dodgers ended up with the win, yet this is overshadowing it. Definitely disappointing. This is a great point that Roy Estrada, can I get our first standing ovation of the evening for Roy Estrada? I, I give Roy standing ovations quite often, right? Just simply, this is the elite kind of stuff we get at Dodgers Dogs, right? Check this out, Austin. Stay focused, Dodgers fans. Let the facts come out before you speculate. Our goal is the World Series, and let's go strong. Haters are wishing and hoping that Otani is implicated. You have to already understand that the rest of baseball hates the Dodgers right now, right? And I Mm -hmm. promise you, there are a lot of people, as wicked as this sounds, that are absolutely hoping that Otani goes down with this, that aren't implicated with the Dodgers. So you're going to get all of that venom in that confirmation bias, even from some some maybe some journalists that usually are pretty good, you're going to get a lot of that. So just as Roy is telling you, sift through that. Make sure you have the facts. Just know there's going to be a whole bunch of crap thrown on the wall from a whole bunch of people that are already jealous about the Dodgers that went on steroids whenever the Dodgers signed all these great players in the offseason. And you're going to get a lot of people that are rooting for the Dodgers to get drugged through the mud for this. Yeah, no, that that is absolutely right. There's going to be people rooting for the downfall of Shohei Otani and trying to find anything to try to implicate him in whatever is going on. Um, yeah, so be careful of a lot of those reporting. Be careful of the overly optimistic side of it, too. You want to... Uh, Just let everything play out and trust that this process is going to go smoothly and that everything will be sorted out in the investigations. Standing ovation for Roy also says the team needs to circle the wagons. BC says, I don't see how betting on soccer could be an issue. The problem is, if you're betting on soccer and that's what they proved, then you're probably thinking, well, they're not just betting on soccer, right? I mean, maybe they did, but... That's kind of a that's kind of a tough sell to give people. There's always going to be that in the back of your mind. What hey, what else have they done too, right? Okay, so as we continue on, good evening, Nando three ninety, Nando three ninety Yamamoto interpreter smiling from ear to ear right now. Bob student ten. This is Otani's lawyer protecting him. Ipe had bad debt. Otani pays, but that might be illegal. Ipe takes the sword to protect any implications to his friend. My rosy colored glasses. Yeah. Uh, again, that that's that speculation. I probably shouldn't have read that that comment because, like I said, we're going to try to stay away from speculation. So, if you have an idea of what you think happened or a speculative type comment to make, I don't mean to be rude and I don't mean to be uh, sarcastic or negative or any of that. But please try to refrain from doing that at least tonight. That that's not what we want this conversation to be right okay so the only people spending this up are people who root for teams that otani doesn't okay so let's get past the otani stuff i'm going to stop reading shohei otani uh comments as i get down through this of course this is very explosive austin i'm going to as i look through these comments what i wanted to do tonight as we as the dodgers are playing the padres in this series in korea opening up with san diego Wanted to kind of go through the teams in the NL West, cover the roster just a little bit, and get in a conversation about just how good the NL West could be this year. So why don't you start that talk? 
I know that it, a little bit of a transition that we have to make because this obviously was not the show that we had initially planned. Casey had talked a little bit about me this morning because there are some teams that are in the NL West that could be competitive this year, at least for a wild card spot. You can have certain thoughts as far as whether or not you think these teams are going to be fighting for the national league west i still think when i've done my evaluation of the teams that the dodgers talent level that they have the base of talent and the depth of talent that they have in their system is just too strong to where i believe that they are going to win the national league west however there are some teams that are worth looking out for. There are some rosters that do have a lot of talent. Some rosters perhaps have, they have different areas of strength that they have to each one of their rosters. So obviously right now the Dodgers are playing the San Diego Padres. There are a couple of different areas of thought when you look at the San Diego Padres team. One, their run differential that they had last year was actually really good. They were around a 500 team. Yet, if you look at the run, the number of runs that they scored versus the number of runs that they gave up, they should have been last year closer to a 92-ish winning team instead of a 500 winning team, which means they would have easily made it into the playoffs last year if run differential had determined their faith. So you could have states that and think that the Padres are going to be decent from that last from this year because of that run differential. However, they are losing some key pieces. They are losing the best player that was on their team last year, which was Juan Soto. Juan Soto had a 158 OPS plus last year, which is well above a lot of the rest of their team. They still have some talent, yet I think they are very front-loaded, especially in their in their uh, lineup that they have. They so, have like, if, if Manny Machado and, and Fernando Tatis Jr., if they don't have a great night, they're going to struggle. That's what you're saying. Yes, yes, That then that's absolutely right. They do have Xander Bogarts, which there's some kind yeah. of mixed numbers on his. Uh, so what I typically use, and I'll talk about this a little bit, because what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to predict 2024 20, statistics based off of past performances and past statistics so offensively one of the best measure some of the best measures of predicting future success one we use a lot of wrc plus one of the key components in wrc plus which actually you can see on baseball savant is a statistic called woba have you do you know exactly what woba is or Wait, do you on base into average it? Weighted on base average. So let me explain it to the audience in case you aren't familiar with it. So WOBA is a statistic that attempts to fix some of the flaws and some of the other baseball statistics. So let's talk about certain baseball statistics. Batting average. The thing with batting average that seems to be a flaw is every single base hit is weighted the exact same. Yeah. Which we know that a home run is better than what a single is just yeah. theoretically just because a home run is going to get you a run whereas a single is going to put you on first base a home run is a run every single time so imagine a class doesn't... imagine a class if a test and a quiz were all weighted the exact same right and the quiz was open exactly book. that's not fair right so that's what these exactly. advanced analytics try to do they try to give a weight to different types of successful outcomes yes and so what weighted on based average does it's on the scale of on base percentage yet it gives a specific weight to each individual outcome a player can have based off of mathematics so as opposed to a slugging percentage which defines weight gives twice as amount of weight to double times two to double three times to a triple four times to a home run it does a calculation year to year based on the scale that it could have based on how valuable a walk, a single, a double, a triple, a home run is and puts it on a scale, which is why WOBA is one of the better offensive statistics of measuring an offensive output. Now, expanding that a little bit more, you can also look at X WOBA, which all that is, if you right. see an X in front of everything, is just expected WOBA. And I know I'm getting a little bit nerdy right now, but those are the, some of the statistics that I'd be looking for when I'm looking for future success of some of these players. And there's a little bit of reason to be worried at least slightly about a Xander Bogarts just because his wo expected WOBA numbers 
aren't amazing. I still think he's going to be a great player. But and then you look up and down this Padres roster. Jake Cronenworth has struggled over the past couple of seasons. He is their three hole hitter. You go up and down. Hong Song Kim, who's making his homecoming uh, to Korea, is a really good player. Yet they are relying very heavily on that top five in their lineup the bogarts tatis cronenworth machado hassan kim to carry and elevate their team because their depth isn't really good and i know the padres have a couple of younger guys that they've called up jackson merrill and graham Pauly, who are young mm-hmm. really good talented guys it's going to take them time to get adjusted sure. to the major leagues especially because they spent significant time in either low a or high a last year i remember seeing Jackson Merrill and Graham Pauly play for the Tin Caps yeah. back in August of last year. They're good players, but this is a huge jump, and they're yeah. relying on them because of the lack of depth that they have. Uh, their pitching rotation is solid. You Darvish, decent pitcher. Joe Musgrove's really solid. Um, I think Michael Kane is going to be really good as a pitcher that they acquired from New York. Obviously, they got Dylan Cease. The depth in their bullpen, I don't necessarily love, although I think it's all right. So the Padres, just talking about the Padres, and again, we're going through the National League West team, so I went into a little bit of a statistical nerd outbreak. Um, The Padres, I think there is reason to be hesitant about them, especially because they lost a couple of their hitters that drew the most walks for them in Juan Soto, Trent Grisham. There's a lot of warning times for the Padres. What was that? That and they sucked last year. And and they were not great last year. So <laughs> there's reason there's reason initially to say, hey, they have a good run differential last year. Maybe that's going to correct itself this year. And then there's reason for hesitation going forward. So with all of these teams, though, one, never underestimate, uh, underestimate your opponent. That is a lesson that the Dodgers should have learned oh, yeah. in 2022 and 2023. And they almost lost to the Giants in 2021 during the playoffs, although the Dodgers pulled out on top. So never underestimate your opponents. Find a different areas of weakness, and I think they can attack with the Padres potential, lack of patience at the plate, and lack of depth that they have. I think there's going to be times where the Padres struggle offensively. So any thoughts on the Padres right now? Yeah, that just watching, you mentioned the, the lack of discipline, and whenever you get into big situations, you can see that with the slider with the Dodgers and the bullpen, call it a sweeper or a slider, whatever you want. I thought that was pretty obvious last night. Speaking of the Dodgers, let's get into the Dodgers and the game last night. We probably should have started with that. I thought probably, it was. Yeah. I thought there was a lot to like about the Tyler Glass now performance. I'm going to go ahead and click that over so you can kind of see uh, what happened with his performance here. Let me get that in. Yeah, let me get that started so you can see Tyler Glass now here. I thought there was a lot yeah. to like. I mean, you're talking about spin rates right there. That's a 95 mile hour fastball. That's a 97 right there, and those spin rates right there are pushing 2600, somewhere in there like 2650. Which hey, 2300 is pretty much the cutoff between a two seam and a four seam. So you're talking yeah. about massively, massively, massively elite. He, of course, that was his problem last night. That's why he walked four guys. I believe it was four. But those fastballs right there are 100% elite when you talk talk about spin rate. I believe he touched like 98.5 with his velo. Also, I think he he averaged like 96. So the velo on his fastball was elite. The spin rate was elite. The movement on his off-speed stuff was elite. It's just simply a matter of can he locate his curveball? Because that fastball up the zone right there at 97 that we see – with him, with that type of spin rate that has carry, that is something that's going to get a lot of hitters out. If he can pair that with his huge curveball and just land the curveball for a strike, just don't pull it like he did last night, that's when you get a Tyler Glass now that nobody on earth can hit. That's the Tyler Glass now that the Dodgers signed up for. That's the Tyler Glass now that they obviously hope that they get this year in 2023, and I think they will. I think it's going to be really fun to see Tyler Glass now get back home in Los Angeles and get back in front of his home crowd. I think that adrenaline there, that 98 right there with a little bit of arm side movement to it, probably about four or five inches to it, 
with the 2600 rpms to it there's another curveball that he pulled 87 down in the zone i think the dodgers are going to get that elite tyler glass now when he gets back in front of his home crowd so i thought he gave yeah. a good start i thought the bullpen was simply fantastic joe kelly he got three outs in a row on three consecutive pitches i thought they labeled it as a sweeper but the sweep the sweeper slider of uh, Evan Phillips was elite again. It had over 40 inches of vertical movement to it. I thought Daniel Hudson looked good. I, I've been, I've been, I've been trying to tell people for a long time the Dodgers were going to use this guy a lot, and I, I think you kind of saw how the Dodgers. Ryan Brazier again. Uh, he didn't have to throw his cutter. I thought that was very promising mm-hmm. for Ryan Brazier that he could get through that entire outing and not have to use his cutter at all. So he still has bullets in the holster, and he's able to get through an entire inning without having to use his number one, his number one bullet. So I thought, and if you add Blake Trine into that, right, and Bruce Dar Gratterall, that looks like it's going to be a pretty darn good bullpen, which is why we've been saying for quite a while now, save all your bullets. Don't go get an Emmanuel Classe. Keep them in case you need to go get a Willie Adamas, right? Hey, how about yeah. maybe the best part of last night was the fact that Gavin Lux – we talk about the process, and we were very honest when Gavin Lux was struggling. We, we point blank said, Austin, that Gavin Lux's process did not look good at certain times during spring training, right? But, hey, now you have to say not only did Gavin Lux not make any errors last night, he also looked really, really, really good. Let me – defense at second base here. Let me cut this over. Here you can see Gavin Lux playing defense at second base. So not only did he not make errors, I thought he just looked good too. Yeah, no, he looked a lot better than what he has. Obviously, it's been a struggle for him so far this year in spring training, and there's a lot of question marks that have been brought up about Gavin Lux and his defensive ability. He made the plays that he needed to yesterday, and this goes back to the emphasis of what we talked about, that in the past, Gavin Lux has been a good, solid, quality defensive second baseman, above average by outs above average in the past, It's about getting those reps that he needs to right now. And right now he was able to take advantage of the reps that he got yesterday. And as he continues to do that, as he continues to make the proper throws, I think he's going to start to build up his confidence more and really start to become more of the Gavin Lux that we saw before the Gavin Lux, who was good, solid dynamic offensively and a good, solid defensive player as well had a couple of opportunities at the plate today did not record a hit had a solid line out that had an expecting batted average of 730 so that would maybe a little bit of bad luck there had the baseball that was hit through the glove of Drake, Jake Cronenworth at first base which yeah that was cool t- gave Dodgers the lead uh so good for Gavin Lux good to see him play with a little bit more confidence today and good for the pitching staff as well. The pitching staff performed really well. You mentioned some of the spin rate that was on Tyler glass. Now in his fastball, his slider got up to 2,900 rotations per minute, which is just nasty. I mentioned during the show on Monday, uh, a Twitter account or an X account, as you could say at TJ stats, which looks a little bit at some of the stuff plus numbers and all the numbers for the Dodgers were really good today. All above 100 100 when looking at the overall picture uh 115 for evan phillips overall the tyler glass now got a 114 a brazier got a 111 so really good numbers so far for the dodgers pitching staff and a lot of the behind the scene metrics of what they're doing a couple of good batted ball datas i know shohei otani hit a 119 mile per hour foul ball before he hit 112 mile per hour single. There's a lot to be excited about, about this performance. I know the Dodgers early in the game left a lot of runners on base. And I know that can be frustrating for Dodgers fans. What happens if this continues? I think it's a good thing that the Dodgers were getting those base runners on base. And I think it's a matter as if you continue to apply that pressure to opposing teams, if you continue to make opposing teams throw a lot of pitches eventually things are going to burst. The bubble is going to burst. And that is something that I think the Dodgers are going to see. I think it was interesting how the Padres attacked the Dodgers lineup. You saw them bring out a lot of lefties. And there's one particular person that's going to get a lot of opportunities against left-handed pitchers. That's Mookie Betts. 
because of the way the Dodgers have the lineup set up, if you have a Jason Hayward, a Gavin Lux in the 8-9 hole, then you have Shohei Otani and Freddie Freeman at the 2-3 and three hole. You have Mookie Betts as penciled in in between there. I think he's going to see a lot of left-handed pitching during the course of the season, and I think that's going to create a lot of unique and favorable opportunities for Mookie Betts to get in good hitter friendly counts to get on base to go up a, for a Shohei Otani I think that's going to be real positive for him I would totally agree with that I, I was very impressed with the way that Mookie Betts and Shohei Otani both went with their pitches Shohei Otani actually got a pitch on the upper half of the plate on the on the upper part of the zone I should say on the outer half that he pulled and then the pitch that he got low and in he actually went the other way with so he yep. was actually he was able to cover the entire plate. He was able to cover both up and down in the zone. And what's so impressive about Otani and Betts to me, just the the baseball, the pure element of the baseball game for me, is that it's very obvious. Him, Freddie Freeman, and Otani, I think they, they I think it's obvious that they are great hitters first. They're not just guys that are up there trying to just launch the ball. We talk about the three true outcomes that that we don't necessarily dislike, right? I mean, I, I don't – there is a place for the three true outcomes in baseball. I, I yes. get all of it. Trust me. I, I We get all of it. We probably get nerdier yeah. on this show than, than most shows. But when it comes to Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, they, they're not even considering three true outcomes. They're trying to be a great hitter. They're trying to hit the ball where it's pitched. And they're trying to get on base and hit over 300. I love that aspect about these three guys. Yeah, they are. They have aspects of three true outcomes, meaning they do hit a lot of home runs and they do walk a lot. They also recognize that strikeouts are not good. And so a lot of, especially Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, don't strike out a whole lot. And they are good baseball players first. And I think that is something that is key. They're smart. They're able to do difficult things uh, really well in the game of baseball, make it look easy. And this is an absolute force that the Dodgers have at the top of their lineup where opposing teams are going to worry about, especially when it gets late in games, it's going to be, we have to get the six, seven, eight, nine hitters out so that we don't have to go up against this juggernaut part of the lineup. And the good thing with the Dodgers is the way that their lineup is sorted out they don't have a lot of weaknesses in their lineup the lineup is really stacked and they have some depth that they can bring on off the bench they brought in kike hernandez today who had the sacrifice fly to tie the game they also didn't even utilize a chris taylor who can come in off the bench who has some power in his bat there's a lot of depth to this team there's a reason why a lot of predictions have the dodgers winning so many games it's because this team is stacked right now, and there's so much depth that they have. Andrew Friedman and company have done a really good job of orchestrating this offense, orchestrating this roster that the Dodgers have, uh, and we're starting to see it on display. So they definitely did leave runners in scoring position today. However, they did force the Padres to pitch 173 pitches as opposed to Dodgers only had to pitch 127 that is a good recipe to success. You also had, what, eight, nine walks that the Dodgers have. They're patient. They're able to get on base. They're putting runners on base, putting pressure on opponents' teams. Uh, that is exactly what you want to do, especially when you have this team that has a lot of pop. They're going to run into one, and it's not just going to be a solo home run. It's going to be multi-run home runs, whereas if you don't walk a whole lot, you're going to hit a lot of solo home runs. Because of this team, because they have the ability to get on base a lot and they provide power with that, you're going to score runs in chunks. And I think that's something that the Dodgers were able to do it a little bit of a different way, hit some singles, play baseball yeah, uh, a little bit old school, exactly. which, as which you might say. Yeah, absolutely. They were able to do that today, which is a really good element because they need that aspect of the game as well. It can't just be about launching the home runs because that leads to inconsistencies. The Dodgers have the ability to do that. They can also provide other aspects, getting base hits, stealing bases uh, at times, and play a good, solid brand of baseball. They have a lot of great baseball players on this team. No doubt about that. Hey, Roy Estrada, haters trying to say Cronenworth had an inning double play, but he's saying no, he didn't because that was Gavin Lux running, and Gavin Lux yeah. would have beaten that out anyways. That is a great point. I, I could not agree. Now, that was a terrible break 
four and that boy that's a tough error isn't it i mean you give a guy an error because his glove broke i mean yeah. i guess you have to i'm not saying he shouldn't be but that's a tough error to take i totally agree with roy that lux would have beaten that out it would not have been a double play yeah, no, and then you're talking about game tied runners at the corners with yeah. two outs. You could total, you could see argue that the Padres are going to get out of that. They do have to go up against Mookie Betts in that situation, but then you're dealing with a whole variety. It definitely was a tough break, and no, we don't mean to make a pun with that. Definitely a tough break for Jake Conenworth and the Dodgers. Uh-huh. Or Drake Kenner, Cronenworth, and the Padres. It was a great break for the Dodgers. They took advantage of it and were able to add on some runs after that. Great comment, Roy. Hey, good evening, Matty Man 5 Dodge. Good evening, Robert Roca. Good evening, Adam 818. Thank you so much for joining Adam 818. Fell asleep in the fifth inning last night, this morning. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning for me. Yeah, I think a lot of us fell asleep. I did that too. Turned it on, got it started, fell asleep, woke up in the eight, fell asleep. (laughs) I just couldn't stay awake. Hey, Matty Man 5 Dodge, a championship is going to hang over the Dodgers all winter. Yeah. Nando 390, thank you so much for joining. Nando says, hopefully Lux gained some confidence. He looked decent in game one. Yeah, Jose Ayala was ready for us to start talking some baseball. Okay, Matty Man 5 Dodge says, anyone in the chat forecasting doom is a disgruntled Padres fan. Hey, okay, so as we continue on with our great talk of the game of baseball, it was a great game last night, and it was really fun to watch the Dodgers again come back from a deficit in the late innings and do so not having to hit the home run. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. And it doesn't seem like the ball was traveling as much as it had in that stadium. I don't know if it just happened to be opening day. I don't know exactly what's going on with that. So you're going to have to find other ways to win. And the Dodgers found a way to win, which is what you want to see from this club. Uh, They, yeah, they were able to do it. Hey, Shane Rochester, thank, thank you so much for joining. Good evening, gentlemen. I never even went to sleep last night. Hey, great for you. Congratulations. That You are a tougher human being than I am. I can guarantee you that. Roy Estrada, yeah. see if you agree with this. Do the Dodgers need to find a contact hitter in the four or five spot? Smith is okay, but Muncie can't be near four or five. What do you think? I'm fine with it with the lineup as it is right now. I, th- I I still think that Max Muncy has the ability to run into that power. And I think with the guys that you have in front of him, I think that's going to be valuable because I think that's going to lead to some of those two, three grand slam type of outings. I think Will Smith, if you look at some of his numbers, he does not strike out a whole lot. He is that contact type oriented hitter that you have from a Mookie Betts who doesn't strike out a whole lot and a Freddie Freeman who doesn't strike out a whole yeah. lot. Shoei Otani is about league average-ish and his strikeout percentage maybe a little bit below league average, maybe strikes out a little bit more. So I, I'm totally fine with where Max Muncy is in the lineup. But then you have following him, you have some guys that have some swing and miss in their game. You have a Teoscar Hernandez, you have a James Alman. So maybe you can make the argument that – although this wouldn't go great with the lefty versus righty matchup, that you don't want three straight strikeout hitters in a row in a Max Muncy, Teoscar Hernandez, Correct. and a James Outman. Maybe that is the argument, in which case you would be making the argument to moving Max Muncy up, although I don't know if you want Otani, Freeman, and Max Muncy three straight in lineup with three straight lefties, then you're going to get a left-handed reliever every single time. So right now, I think this is the debate of where they're doing. I think they have a lot of good contact hitters towards the front. And then you have guys that can swing and try to hit some bombs in Max Muncy, Teoscar Hernandez, and a James Outman back to back to back. And I think this is the way just right now with the, how the roster is constructed, the best and most optimal way that they're going to construct the lineup. I got a solution for everything that you just said right there. Your two issues are, okay, probably Muncie needs to be the four hole so you don't have three strikeout guys in a row because you can go Muncie, Will Smith, and then a strikeout guy in T.O. Hernandez, and then James Outman, right? So you're breaking those three up by putting Muncie in the four hole and putting Smith behind him, but then you have three lefties in a row, right? So I have a solution to that. All right, let's hear it. Otani leads off and Mookie Betts hits three hole. Ooh, that would be uh, that puts that Max would Muncy be... in the four hole and Will Smith in the five hole. So then, do you want a so so? Let's say that you do that. Let's say, do you want to have uh, Jason Hayward, 
Gavin Lux, Shohei Otani, and Freddie Freeman back to back to back to back in the lineup. Yeah, because you have Altman and then you have Altman and Lux, and then Otani, and then Fre- <laughs> I don't. And this is this oh what we're gosh, talking about. Oh, oh my and this, gosh! And these yeah. are the conversations yeah. that they have when they're constructing lineup. Uh, and so I think they've come to the lineup. I think they've come to a lineup that kind of minimizes yeah. some of Good the point. errors in each. So this is something that you, you have to be thinking about. So yeah. Uh, there's no perfect lineup yeah, no, that the Dodgers have right now. Uh, don't they overthink definitely it too, are right? left-handed heavy, which is something that you have to keep in mind. There's which is why they needed T.O. Even if T.O.'s not great, that's why they needed him. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely right. And he can be that guy that can go up against left-handed pitchers, which there's going to be a lot of left-handed pitchers that go up against the Dodgers. And certainly a reason why other teams have tried to hoard some of those left-handed pitchers. You saw the Giants go out and get a Blake Snell. They have Kyle Harrison coming up through the organization. You saw the Diamondbacks go out and get Eduardo Rodriguez. They are definitely, they definitely know what the Dodgers are. And they know that the Dodgers have a lot of great left-handed hitters. So they are trying to find the best possible matchups they can come up with, which there's not a great matchup going up these guys with the Dodgers, but that might be a small advantage or at least a little bit less of a disadvantage that they're going to try to take off. So roster construction or lineup construction, I should say, definitely an intriguing topic. Uh, no doubt about that. So the humidity, we have a question from Gregor. Do you think the guy, the high humidity in Korea will affect the pop in the ball? It's, it's because you're not very far above sea level. The, the 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 higher elevation you get the thinner the air becomes and the thinner the air becomes the more the ball carries so it's about the 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 small amount level above sea level is why the ball is not carrying and boy it is not carrying at all mike boyer good evening so the mvp of game one was a glove i don't think that happens too many times in the 45 plus years i've been watching dodgers baseball angelo i'm a fan oh yeah i support the decisions of the coaches yes I was just about to say there is always something new that can pop up in a game of baseball, which keeps us watching every single day. Shane Rochester, here's a great comment. Glass now absolutely battled. That's a sign of an ace. Not having his best stuff. Got that double play with the bases loaded, no outs. Mm -hmm. That was huge. That is the sign of an ace. Hey, we know aces are going to have their times where they go out and everything works. And when that happens, they have elite. Hey, when Tyler Glass now goes out and he has his ace stuff, (laughs) you're not hitting him. There's yeah. going to be those outings, right? But what's going to determine whether Tyler Glass now actually is the ace the Dodgers needs is what Shane's saying right here. On the times where he's not perfect, he's pulling his curveball, right? He's not necessarily locating properly. Can he still get you through five or six innings and put the team in position to win like he did last night? That yeah. is the sign of a true ace. I totally agree with that. Yeah, and sometimes you are even more encouraged by these type of outings than the outings where they are absolutely dominant. Of course, you want to see those outings where they're absolutely dominant, putting up zeros. But these times where they're fighting through, they only, he only gave up two runs, didn't ha- didn't might not have had complete control of everything, didn't have complete control of that curveball, which can be devastating, can be elite. Yet he was able to, as you said, get that double play with the bases loaded and nobody out. That is huge, and that kept the Dodgers in this game in fighting distance where they could come back into this game. One of the things that has been a little bit concerning about Tyler Glass now in the past, and I'm glad in game one, and you can label this something to do with some of the effects of uh, the stadium and Korea, but his ability to limit some of the hard contact last year, his average exit velo was in the 15th percentile, which means there can be some concern potentially about some extra base hits that he gave up. He was able to fight through everything and limit the damage. That was huge for Tyler Glass now and his continued growth as being the ace of the Dodgers staff. He fought through everything, only gave up two runs, was able to keep the Dodgers in the game, able to provide them with some length. Even though it wasn't the perfect outing, of course, you still have to be incredibly encouraged by what Tyler Glass now provided and what he's going to do in the future for the Dodgers. Is that because the, the Padres run out of hitters as they get to the middle to the bottom of their lineup, or is that because he kept battling? 
I think it. Ha I think a lot of it had to do with him keep him battling through everything, battling through some of the adversity that he dealt with. I don't remember exactly who it was that hit the double play. I'd have to go back and actually check to see uh, who that was. But I think I think you could maybe go to it through the lack of depth that the Padres had. But I still think Tyler Glasnow performed really. I think he showed a lot tonight in his outing. There's also some calls that you could argue back and forth. Yeah. Maybe that should have been a strike. Uh, however, you're not going to get every single one of those calls. And there's going to be some calls that you don't deserve that you do get. So that kind of balances out in the end. Greg Osterberg says plate umpire was inconsistent with his strike zone. I'm going to go off on just a little bit of a tangent. I've heard some, and and I've been one of them. Honestly, this is this is a tough thing to go to Korea in the middle of spring training and then start spring training back up. Basically, have two opening days. It's a tough thing to do. Mm -hmm. I understand all that, but here's what this also got the Dodgers. Right, first of all, it's growing the brand, which I'm not sure the Dodgers needed to grow, but I mean, it, it's definitely growing the brand throughout the world. It's putting the game yes. of baseball on showcase. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's taking all of these guys like Landon Knack, Michael Grove, all the, Bobby Miller, all these guys, Kyle Hurt, who are on this team. They're getting to go to Korea with the Dodgers, and they're getting to be rock stars, right? I mean, this yeah. is a really cool experience for those guys. And, yeah. by the way, because of the expanded rosters of this, they're actually getting to start the Major League season on the 26-man roster, which that means, Austin, that means that their clock starts now. Instead of not starting on the 26-man roster, now their clock towards becoming a free agent doesn't start. Now they get that they, they have that clock that can work towards service time. And so from all those perspectives, kudos to the Dodgers for putting all those guys on the roster that they did. I, I, I greatly appreciate that. These guys, we say all the time, I won't go off on it, I promise. But these guys need opportunity. This gave guys like that opportunity. I hope we see some of them this next morning it will be for us here in the united states in this next game as i don't think the dodgers will throw any of their bullpen arms back to back nights so i think you're going to see a whole mm -hmm. new crop of bullpen arms which is exciting for me because that means you might see landon knack you might see kyle hurt you might see michael grove you might see all those guys right that is super exciting for me and i wouldn't think they would throw yamamoto like they did glass now more than five innings. You wouldn't think they would do that. So I think you're going to see four relievers, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see who those guys are. So you're getting an opportunity to get those guys in. That's fantastic as well. And also, I mean, you know, you're getting to play the Padres, which is cool. So, yes, there are some, some down aspects to this, but the positives outweigh the negatives a thousand to one for me. I, I just think this thing yes. in Korea is fantastic. Yes, no, it's it's uh, it is fantastic, and I get it. Opening day, starting for, especially for fans on the West Coast at three a.m. doesn't seem like the greatest thing to do. Yet this isn't exactly for everyone in America. This is for the people of South Korea, and this is for growing the brand of baseball international wise. There will be an opening day, a domestic opening day as it's called back in about a week or so where they will come to Los Angeles and it'll be regular time. But this is about growing the game of baseball in South Korea, which for the people over there, for the fans of baseball, uh, I think it's absolutely huge. And I think it's going to attract a lot of people, a lot of kids to play the game of baseball that got to see Shohei Otani play a major league game in your home country, in your backyard. And, attract a whole generation of baseball fans. I think this is absolutely huge for the game of baseball, huge for the brand of the Dodgers, which, as you stated, doesn't necessarily need to grow, yet this isn't going to hurt at yeah. all. And I think this is going to be a great thing, especially for the Dodgers, for Austin Kim, who's making a return back to his home country. He's gotten yeah. a lot of standing ovations. Great for him. I know he's a Padre, but you have to feel good about this storyline as well. And for the younger guys, because and you of know the way... they've adopted Otani and Yamamoto in Korea, too. I mean, they, they, they oh, have, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. With it just Asian being a two-hour yeah. plane ride. 
yeah absolutely, absolutely. it's uh, for coming over from that part of the world and for these younger guys who are going to be able to say that they were on opening day roster for the dodgers in 2024 for guys like kyle hart for gus varland yeah for a land and neck yeah. for all of these guys this is absolutely huge it starts their clock as you stated and yeah so I get it there. It might not be the perfect situation for the Dodgers. And there are certainly some things that they're going to have to work around as a result. Goods are ab- absolutely outweigh the negative. Even if you have to go back, don't want to wake up at 3 a.m. and have to watch a replay of the game. I think that is a small price to pay to grow the game of baseball internationally and try to attack, attract even more talent from across the world. I think that mm-hmm. is huge. World Baseball Classic was huge and amazing for the game of baseball. This is a small continuation of that. Yeah. I would agree with BC. BC has a good point. I prefer if they just didn't do it there. Go somewhere where baseball isn't quite as popular. But I think the first time you do this, you Mm -hmm. want to put your best foot forward and you want the rest of the world to go, oh, wow, I want that, right? Yeah. And so the next time you do it, you go to a smaller place that maybe baseball isn't as big. You already know how to do it. You've worked the kinks out. Yeah, and you'd have to work out – stadium wise where you could go the field making sure that it's appropriate and suitable for a major league quality play which they have worked around they played in london before they've played in australia they played all over the place before so i think that is huge but i think it's also something where i don't if i don't recall baseball ever going to south korea before and they are a huge baseball country so i think it's also something where they should reward south korea for what they do for the players that they have provided in the past they brought brought some great players they brought uh, a guy like a hung il Choi to the dodgers organization who's from that part of the world uh and other great baseball players that have been from the country of korea so i think it's important to reward them and i think baseball is going to have opportunities in the future to do unique cool things to grow the game of baseball I love the Field of Dreams game. I know it was kind of cheesy. It kind of a um, a little bit of a game just to just to showcase the game, but it also was a really cool feature oh, that, that they had. Cool. That was cool. It was cool. super cool. It was really cool. I actually I got to see uh, the field that they were playing on an actual Field of Dreams on my road trip that I went on last year, uh, which is really cool. I like when they go down to uh latin america and play some of those games i think they have might have an opportunity to do even more of those games which is amazing i like what the marlins are doing where they're allowing some of the noise makers and some of the just themes of baseball that they have in latin america be part of the marlins games and just growing this game even more I think it's huge for this game yeah. going forward. And so th- I think this is a huge positive for the game of baseball, even if it does inconvenience the Dodgers in the short term. This is Edgardo Enriquez that you're seeing on the screen. This is actually video of him in the spring breakout game. You're seeing back and forth. I'm trying not to play too much of the breakout game because I'm not sure if that's video that I can only play short clips up. So I'm going back and forth. So some information on him. He was a pretty big prospect has been hurt for the last couple of years, finally back on the mound. What you're seeing here, though, you're seeing a four seam with lots and lots of RPMs, a four seam that can reach uh, close to 100 miles an hour, big time, big time, big time change up, and just absolutely dirty slider that we've seen there. So this is a guy that has been a big prospect before, just working his way back from injury. So it it kind of popped to people's eyes like, wow, who the heck is this guy? Just another one of those guys the Dodgers are nursing back to health and super excited. He ended with Rancho last year. Austin, you know what that means for you? Oh, he's coming Uh up. (laughs) He's going to be suiting that Great Lakes Loons green or that Great Lakes Loons beautiful white jerseys that they have. Or as I'm wearing right now, Great Lakes Loons, Los Pepinillos, Picantes, Del Norte specialty jerseys that they bring out three times a year. Yeah, no, he was somebody that was on the spring breakout roster that I wasn't too terribly familiar with. Uh, And then when they brought him into the game and you were able to watch him pitch against the Angels, it was a wow moment. Like they they have guys that can throw heat that are still coming up through the system. I thought that I had already gotten a good picture of the talent that was in the system. Yet there's still more to come. Shane Rochester, good point here. I've got a counterpoint to it, though, Shane. We'll see what you think about this. 
I'm all for showcasing the MLB around the world, but not opening day. The fans in L.A. should have seen Shohei and Glass now and tomorrow Yoshi make your debut. The problem with that is you need that travel time coming back. So if you, the only way you could do it would be maybe right before, but you really can't do it any other time during the season because you need to give the, – the reason why this worked is that you had the two exhibition games before it because you have the travel, right? I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's ridiculous travel. I mean, it's, it's, I mean it, you think it's tough going from West Coast to East Coast. The time change is ridiculous. So these major leaguers need a couple of days just to adjust their body, correct? We're seeing Gardo yeah. Enriquez here. I'm going to go ahead and continue to playing that. And then they got the two exhibition games. And then when it's over, they get to come back and play some spring tra- training games, correct? So they did this in a time of the year to where they had buffer on both sides of the game. So I don't disagree with you in the sense that Dodgers fans should have gotten to see the the opening day with Glass now and Yamamoto. Just from a logistical perspective, I just don't see how it could work any other time of the year. Yeah, this is going to be the only time of year where they're going to make a trip with this amount of travel and with this drastic of a time difference and what that impacts on the individual players make it work i think this is the only time that they're going to make it happen to where if they plan on going to let's say japan in the future which absolutely is part of mlb's plan Ooh, that'd be cool, to try to it? get shohei otani and yoshinobu yamamoto back to japan uh it's going to be the exact same thing where they're probably going to be starting the season in Japan if MLB and the Dodgers are able to make that work. Yeah, that's what Shane says. I want to see them play in Japan. That's a great comment, though. We have an elite crowd. Hey, Akira LAD all the way from, speaking of, Japan, Japan. right? How about that? Good evening, Akira. One more massive game going to happen tonight. Yamamoto is three years straight best pitcher in Japan. He said last night during his interview, he simply – can pitch normally what all of his best debut in the major leagues excited to see Yamamoto don't you know he has butterflies oh yeah no I I can't imagine what it's like to be Yoshinobu Yamamoto right now being yeah. able to make your MLB debut but also be doing it in South Korea over it, near the part of the world where you had been pitching your entire professional career where you had so much success uh, it starts to get real for Yoshinobu Yamamoto, so I'm excited to see what he's able to do, what sort of adjustments that he's taken from spring training, uh, and be able to implement them to- during tomorrow's game. Christopher Navarro, the guy that threw the uh, Christopher Navarro, the the, the uh, Edgardo Enriquez, that narrative there and watching film on him, that came from Christopher Navarro because he wanted to see video on him. So, Angelo, I'm wondering who will throw out the first pitch tomorrow. Chanho Park was the perfect start to the game today any idea austin i honestly have no idea who they're gonna make throw out uh the first pitch i don't know too much of the history between the dodgers the padres major league baseball in south korea to where i have the perfect ideal candidate so i'll I'll be excited to see who they bring out okay so we think the dodgers are the best in the nl west would you agree with that give me your objective opinion are they the best team in the nl west austin Yes, the Dodgers have the most talented team in the NL West to where I believe that they're going to win the NL West this year. There are teams that you should be at least on the lookout for. One, I don't think you're going to get too much competition. At least I'm not anticipating it from the Colorado Rockies. I just think the talent level that they have isn't quite to the level anywhere close to where some of the other teams are. So I'm not anticipating a surprise from Colorado, but the other teams you could conceivably make an argument for each one of those teams making the playoffs, including the reigning national league champion, Arizona diamondbacks who made it to the world series last year. Don't be sleepwalking on the Arizona diamondbacks because they made it to the world series last year. You have to at least give them some due respect. And the giants have been active this during this off season, got the reigning Cy Young award winner of the national league. Before we get back into that, Bob student 10 says, can't wait for the challenge system. Totally agree. Guys like Angel Hernandez days will be numbered. I don't normally do this. I come from a family of officials. My dad was a big 12 football official forever. He's actually officiated national championship games and for a couple of them, many different bowls. And so anyways, just short, long story short, I come. From, he's still a, a replay official in the Big 12 as mm-hmm. we speak. So I come from a family of officials, so I don't normally do this. 
I will say this point blank, Angel Hernandez sucks. There is no reason why that guy is still in the major leagues, man. You should not be able to have the attitude he has and suck that bad. Hey, this is this guy's these guy's livelihoods, man. I mean, when Max yeah. Muncy's at the plate and he hits 32 home runs instead of when he hits a home run instead of striking out because you're calling a pitch that's not a strike on him because he knows the strike zone better than you do. I mean, that's money in Max Muncy's bank account that you could be taken away from him, man. Guys yeah. like Angel Hernandez shouldn't be able to suck like that. I'm sorry because if you sucked as bad as he does as a player, your ass is gone, man. I don't I. I'm getting fired up talking about it right now, but that guy sucks. Yeah, no, he is. I'll just say it mildly and say he is not the greatest umpire Major League Baseball has ever seen. And I think that might be a little bit of an understatement. I got a little fired up there, but, man, I he that it's almost like he's yeah, entitled. Know. It's like, ha, 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 yeah. look what I can do. I mean, it's yeah, like. And, <sighs> yeah, I know, and, and it's frustrating because it se- doesn't seem like there's any sort of accountability for the umpires because now we're able to see there's different twitter accounts that give out umpire scores based off of the calls that they have luckily major league baseball is working on a challenge system in play or an automatic which i've seen a lot it's great you've done it yes yes and you've you've done a video about in the minor leagues them implementing the full Balls and automatic balls and strikes, the robo umps versus the challenge system and what those different aspects. Something is in the works, something is coming, and there will be accountability sometime soon for some of these major league umpires that don't seem to always make the correct calls. Hey, Christopher Navarro, I feel like I went to South Korea. I've been exhausted since Saturday. I can't sleep when there is a Dodgers game. Hey, we have a great crowd tonight. Another great comment from Chris. Hey, Christopher's brought his A game tonight, right? Max Muncy strikes himself out. It's unfortunate that he knows the strike zone better than the umpire. He gets rung up on balls outside the strike zone more than any other player that I've ever seen. And you know, it's interesting. You're human, and I've done a lot of umpiring behind the plate. And you get a feel for the guys that know the strike zone and the guys that don't, and you tend to give the guys who do know the strike zone just from a human element, the the benefit of the doubt, like, who borderline yeah. pitch, if he took it, it's probably a ball, right? He doesn't yeah. seem to get that, though, does he? Which is which is really strange because he walks a lot. Yeah. He, he borderline is 15% walk percentage. You would think a guy like that who is able to draw a lot of those walks would get more of the benefit of the doubt. And I'd have to do a little bit more research because to see – uh, exactly what's going on and see if there's anything out there about some of the calls on Max Muncy. Actually, I don't know if there's any sort of information about that, but it does seem like he does get some of those calls against him more often than he does get calls for him, which is really unfortunate for him because you should have better numbers than what he does have, and he st- still ha- puts up some really good numbers. Hey, by the way, I just linked that article or that 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 video i should say that i did on the robo umps and what it has in there actually it's robo umps versus the challenge system versus none of it it has the triple a manager travis barbary giving comments on it it has landon knack giving comments on it it has i believe gus varlin giving comments on it so hey check that it also gives the triple a play-by-play voice alex friedman who he has no skin in the game and he can tell you point blank he gives his opinion based on what he's done He's talked to a whole bunch of people that make their living based off of being a AAA player. So they've made their living having to deal with all three of these different systems, one being none of it, two being challenged, three being complete robo-umps. And he gave his opinion on what almost unanimously everybody has said to him. So go check that out if you want to know what the people who actually have to do this for a living think about which system is the best and and check that out and – and that, I, like I said, I linked that in the chat. Angela, let's focus on baseball. Yeah. Hey, Shane Rochester, it's a power trip for Hernandez. He wants to be unfair intentionally just to say, oh, yeah, what are you going to do about it? I'm the boss. I get that feel from him. I don't normally like to say that, but I, I do get that feeling from him. Chico Dopeness. Hey, Chico Dopeness. Hey, good evening. Thank you so much for joining. I have a feeling that Otani will be investigated. Yeah, we're we're not talking about Otani anymore. We got over that. We have moved on. Yeah. We were talking. Yeah, if you didn't catch the beginning of the show, we did dive into that yet. We're not gonna do spend any sort of time speculating 
on what could happen. We're going to, we reported on what has been reported on based on the ESPN article. I encourage you to look at that and draw your own conclusions. Yeah. Got a comment here from Chris Fobborg. Casey, tell us how you really feel, right? <laughs> I had to get that off my chest. I don't do that. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure I've ever even mentioned an umpire in this show before, have I? Uh, not and very rarely. It's always in the context of in positive light. As you know, uh, I've been watching Dodgers do- dogs for quite a while. We like to stay positive most of the time yet. There, there are some things <laughs> that frustrate us and sometimes we have to get some things off of our chest and, uh, it, it's good to do that from time to time. Yeah. Okay. So Shane Rochester says that the Dodgers wear other pitchers down. Hey, there is a wear down effect to it. It's not just the fact that every player is good. It's that you just there's no time to breathe and let up for the as the other team's pitcher, right? Yeah, no, and that's what I stated earlier that the Padres threw 46 more pitches than what the Dodgers threw today in the day in today's game, and they threw the exact same amount of innings, and that's because they were able to draw some walks. They were able to force the Padres pitchers just to pitch more. Uh, that can wear down an opposing team's rotation. That can wear down an opposing team's bullpen. And especially if you get into three, four game series, that can have an effect on your opposing team. And that is a real positive that the Dodgers took away. Even though they didn't hit all the time, they weren't great early in the game with runners in scoring position. If you continually put pressure on the opponent team, good things are going to happen more often than not. Hey, and one more comment here as. As we've said it a couple of times, we we have gone, we have talked about the Otani deal. We've given our thoughts on it, and at this point, we've moved on. We're not going to talk about it anymore. I know a lot of you are coming in here early, and I really, really, really appreciate. I don't know which one that is, Roy. I'll I'll take a look at these. I appreciate everybody joining, and we love it. But but if there's any Otani talk from now on, we're just we're just not going to talk about it again. So no more speculation on that. Okay, so Austin, who yes. is better? do you think the Padres or the Giants or the Diamondbacks, which, which team is the second best team? Uh, for me right now, I have to give respect to the national league champion. That is the Arizona Diamondbacks. I get it. Uh, they might not uh, be the first team that comes in mind just because of their tradition, what they have done in the past yet. I like a lot of aspects of their team and they built a unique sorry i just i just hit that user that was that was trolling in this i just wanted the dodgers fans to know great dodgers fans i just i just yeah i hid that user from this channel so we're good to go okay you got it okay perfect yeah so i I was just going to mention the arizona diamondbacks who yes there is a bad taste in the dodgers mountain they're going to have to address the arizona diamondbacks this year they're they have a really good dynamic player in corbin carroll who is one of the best players in the game of baseball plays outfields God, has great speed combine that with power that power speed combination is something that seems to be taking off in the game of baseball especially with the newer rules that were implemented to advance the approach and speed of the game uh they also got some other really good players Cattell Marte is one of the most mm-hmm. underrated players in the game of baseball with his versatility that he provides with his consistent offensive ability they also have a lot of guys up and down their lineup who have a good measure of a metric that we talk talk quite a bit about uh, when we're talking about comparing strikeout percentage and ISO. They have a lot of guys whose ISO is close to or above their strikeout percentage, as well as some guys that can hit for pop. They brought in a Jock Peterson who you can talk a little bit about, or and they brought in a Eugenio, a Eugenio Suarez who plays third base, who's got a ton of power. Uh, there's not, besides a Corbin Carroll, there might not be a guy in this lineup who scares you, which is why I think the Dodgers are a better team than the Arizona Diamondbacks, yet they are a good, solid team that I believe can provide a little bit more consistency. Their roto- rotation is a little bit top-heavy, at least from guys that I'm familiar with, with Zach Allen, Merrill Kelly, Eduardo Rodriguez. We'll have to see how Brandon Fott does in his second full season. And then last year, I think an underrated aspect of the Arizona Diamondbacks and their run last year was the way that they implemented their bullpen. The reason they won against the Philadelphia Phillies is, and strangely enough, a lot of times it when the uh, it doesn't work out when you play the matchup game and it fails, that gets pointed out. What should be pointed out is the Diamondbacks played the matchup game 
exceptionally well against the Philadelphia Phillies to where they, for the bullpen, putting lefties versus right, versus lefties and righties versus righties, they did that really well, and I think they're going to be able to do that. So I've got a lot of respect for the Arizona Diamondbacks, for the young, talented club. They have also got Jordan Lawler that is coming up through their system. That doesn't mean that they are going to win second place. I think the Padres, their lineup is a little bit shallow and inconsistent that in, they're going to battle with inconsistencies as they get big league experience from Jackson Merrill and Grant Pauly who are making such an elevated jump. And so then that brings us to the other team, the San Francisco giants who have been one of the more active teams adding to their club. They added a Blake Snell. Now they've got the best one, two punch uh, of the three teams that I talked talked about and Logan Webb, who is absolutely phenomenal and Blake Snell, who just won the Cy Young award last year. That's going to be really tough. The back half of their starting rotation has some question marks. You have Kyle Harrison, who's a great prospect yet. He's going to be coming up and taking that next step, which we know there's an adjustment period. They have Jordan Hicks, who is a great piece out of the bullpen, making that transition to the starting pitching. So I don't know exactly how that's going to be. They do have, a great closer and Camilo Duvall uh, who is going to be lights out. And so it's going to be playing against the giants. If you're going to be able to score runs in that four through eight innings or early in the games, that's when you're going to have to take advantage of them. They have some good pieces in their lineup, but not ones that you can't work around. Yeah. Uh, they, I mean, they added in a Jorge Soler who does have power, who does have a lot of pop. Yet, if you look at his war metrics as far as the value that he brings a team, he's been closer to a one-ish war player throughout his career. Still is going to get home runs. Defensively, he isn't going to provide a whole lot. He's going to play a lot of designated hitter. Uh, they added in a Matt Chapman who can be a good, solid player at the plate. We'll have to wait and see defensively. He hits the ball incredibly hard. And then you're dealing with Jung Hu Lee, who could be really good, exciting to see how he's able to do. There's some pieces that they have, but I don't think they have the star power or consistency that enough to have them compete with the Dodgers. So all of these teams have good, solid tops of their starting rotations. And then they have some good pieces that you can see through their lineup. Yet, I don't think they have the depth right. and the star power to compete with the Dodgers, which is why I'm still anticipating the Dodgers to win the National League West. Also, they have proven consistently year after year, even last year when it seemed like they weren't didn't put together the greatest roster possible or they dealt with a lot of injuries in their roster. It seemed like every pitcher dealt with injuries last year. They still won 100 games last year, so I have all the confidence in the world that the Dodgers are going to be able to win in the regular season. The question is, which one of these teams are they going to have to face in the postseason? Because this seems to be a trend. 2021 against the Giants, 2022 against the Potteries, 2023 mm -hmm. against the Diamondbacks. You lost two of those. You won another one of those in five games. It's very likely that you're going to have to face one of these teams in the postseason in 2024. Again, assuming that the Dodgers make the postseason, which there's a very, very good chance that they do. Hey, we have a super chat from Jose Ayala. I love the pitcher sequence that Robert used last night. Hey, Matty Man 5, thank you so much for that, Jose. That is just absolutely wonderful. Thank you again yeah. for supporting Dodgers Dogs as part of the Dodgers mm -hmm. Daily Network. We can't tell you how much we appreciate you, Jose. Mm -hmm. and, and as much just for coming and being such a wonderful part of this community. Matty Man 5 Dodge, if the Dodgers just played at 80% of their skill, they don't have to worry about any other team in baseball. Do you agree with that? What was that? Sorry. If the Dodgers just played at 80% of their skill, they don't have to worry about any other team in baseball. Um, I mean, I still respect the skill level of the Atlanta Braves to where if the Atlanta Braves play at 100% of their skill level, then I think there is real competition. And I think perhaps Atlanta takes that. Um, there's still a lot of really good teams, a lot of really good talent. The Dodgers have as much, if not more talent than anybody in the game of baseball. I believe the Dodgers have the be best and most talented club in the game of baseball. Yet there are other teams that you have to worry about and that have a track record recently of performing in the playoffs, like the Philadelphia Phillies, who have 
performed incredibly well the past two seasons. I know they fell apart against the Diamondbacks last year. And then talking about the Atlanta Braves, who had an offense close to on par with the 27 New York Yankees in some metrics last year. They were a great offensive component. There's going to be competition for the Dodgers. That being said, the Dodgers have a ton of talent. They have as good of a chance as anybody this season to make serious waves in the postseason. Who do you think uh, the Dodgers will start tomorrow at catcher? Austin Barnes or Will Smith? And do you think they'll use any of the relief pitchers on back-to-back days? I would I would have to say they wouldn't, and then I would say that they would probably start Austin Barnes. Uh, that, that yeah, that is a that's a really good question. I <clears throat> wouldn't anticipate it, unless maybe if it's something where you need to get one out or an out or two in the ninth inning in a closer type situation. Maybe you bring out an Evan Phillips again to try to get another win if you think that is going to be the best case scenario. Team, if the game is on the line. That could be the one thing, one area where I see some of the relievers going back to back, except this early into spring. I don't see it as likely. As far as a catcher, uh, the reason why it would be Austin Barnes, I would assume, has to do with the fact that he's caught with Yamamoto so far. So I can see that, Um, in which case giving Will Smith a day off tomorrow, I believe, would be the plan. I could see it going either way. Yep. Hey, we got about five more minutes here. We've had a great conversation tonight. Robert Roca, Dodgers bullpen is sick. Are they the best in baseball? Hey, by the way, that last comment was from Young Yi. Young does such a great job. Yes. Uh, I'd have to do a little bit more digging into the Dodgers bullpen. I don't think it is the best. It is a very good bullpen, though. But I think the lack of them having that dominant, elite, left-handed pitcher I think prevents it from being labeled as the best in the game of baseball. I I still think, and I hate to bring them up, but the Houston Astros, I know they spent a lot of money and a lot of years to go after and get a Josh Hader, but that created a great one, two, three out of their bullpen to where they have a lot of depth out of the bullpen. So Dodgers have a great, a really good, solid bullpen. Yet I think they could be one left-handed, maybe a Tanner Scott type piece away from being considered the best bullpen in the game of baseball. Of course, so Alex I'm Vesica, hesitant to give that label. Alex Vesia could perform like that, so we could see how of that Of course, goes. absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to have to wait to see how the Dodgers yeah. play this season. Angelo Lux, the Dodger. This is a great comment. Angelo Lux, the Dodger. He's got my support. Matty Man 5 Dodge says, got to admit, I didn't think Lux would find himself. And then going back down to a comment for Bob Student 10, if Lux solidifies his spot at second base, do you want Mookie Betts to play shortstop all year? If he solidifies, ah, yeah, that it, I guess it depends on the health and sustainability of how Mookie Betts is doing. I so here's Young Yee's comment it. on that. If Lux platoons, yeah. Mookie Betts will start at second against lefties and Rojas at short at, against lefties. You, you could definitely do a little bit of a platoon matchup if you want. Regardless, they're going to manage Mookie Betts and make sure that he's healthy because they have to have the priority in the combination of Miggy Rojas, Gavin Lux, and Mookie Betts leans heavily onto Mookie Betts because of the upside that he has. So they're going to lean into what is best long-term for Mookie Betts to make sure that he is healthy and has as much stamina as possible going into the postseason that is going to be top concern and to where i think it's going to be something that they're going to have to evaluate and look at as the season goes along to see how he's doing how he's managing the workload and what they're going to implement different strategies to make sure that mookie Betts, i don't believe is taking the shortstop Mm -hmm. 162 games i don't think that is realistic at all for mookie Betts. i think he could do it but he might be gassed by going into the postseason, which we saw last season. His performance started to peter a little yeah. bit towards September. I don't want that to happen. I want him to be fully ready to go by the time we hit October. So I yeah. think we're going to mix and match him uh, depending on how you can keep Mookie Betts as healthy and ready to go as possible. Hey, we have a comment. Do you have video of Joe Kelly facing Manny Machado? There you go, my friends. This was a part of Joe Kelly's three pitches, three outs in a row. Let's watch that again. How beautiful is that, right? Joe Kelly getting Manny Machado out. We have just a couple of minutes left. We have had a wonderful crowd tonight. 
So we are going, I'm going to kind of scroll through here and see if I missed anything. I don't think I did, but hey, let me scroll back to the bottom, see what we have here. And then I don't think we have anything else. So I think we're going to, we're going to finish with final comments here, Austin. Yeah, no, a, a lot to discuss tonight. Obviously, early in the show, we had to talk about the breaking news that broke about three, four hours ago with the Sho Shohei Otani and Ipe situation. But I don't want that to cloud over over the good that has happened with the game of baseball reaching out to the people in South Korea with the Dodgers winning on opening day, showing a lot of great signs. Talia Glass now taking some steps and showing you that he can fight in battle as an ace of the staff and really limit some of the damage when he doesn't have all of his stuff for this offense to be able to find unique ways to come back to the game, to put pressure on the opponents in lineup. All great signs to take away from game one of an 162 marathon, a good marathon for a good Dodgers team. Remember this and think about it. The game of baseball is back. Opening day has taken place. I know they will be returning to Los Angeles next week and we'll be able to watch them in person or watch them at a much more normal time. Enjoy these times that we get with Dodgers baseball because it doesn't happen every single day of the year. So the days it does happen, man, you got to wake up out of bed and say, man, we get Dodgers baseball today. This is a good day. All right. It has been a great crowd. Dodgers dogs, you are the absolute best. What a blast it is to get to talk to you. Now I'm going to go spend some time with my Dodgers dogs and my beautiful wife. And we're going to go watch another movie because we're on spring break. How about that, Austin? Sounds like a lot that? of fun, doesn't it? That certainly does. Hey, so until next time, and which will be Friday evening whenever we come at you live, we're going to have a hot take tomorrow, so make sure and tune that in. We actually but we actually flipped our schedules. We brought out the high velo because we wanted to get the Kyle Hurt thing in before the rosters were set. We're going to go with the hot take tomorrow. Make sure and tune into that hot take. Our hot take is going to be about who we think are the best teams in the NOS, so that'll be a lot of fun. So make sure and tune into that tomorrow, and then also – our live show on Friday evening. So super excited for all that. Thank you again to everybody out there for making a wonderful show. Thank you again, Jose, for that wonderful super chat. That is just simply awesome. Austin, thank you so much for all the awesome work you did. By the way, I should have said this early on, but we had quite a bit to do. What a great job you did on Monday's show. That was just a fantastic show. So thank you so much for doing that. And so until next time, go Dodgers.